for one, I want to ask, when did this fusion occur? I think it would be, it would be a good question. Was this in the human line or was this in, you know, the line uh, prior, like, you know, th through our common ancestor between chimps and humans? Go ahead. It occurred after the divergence with chimpanzees, divergence okay. from chimpanzees. Okay, so, uh, so technically the argument would be if humans and chimps share a common ancestor, um, then we should observe a, uh, a fusion event. Um, human chromosome two shows evidence of a, hum uh, of a fusion event. Therefore, humans and chimps share a common ancestor, right? More or less, because human chromosome two, say near the middle, is it like remnants of centromeric DNA? Uh, no, but no, it's not not remnants of centromeric DNA. It's mm -hmm. there, there are head to head arrangements of uh, degenerate telomere repeats. Yeah, so like telomeric DNA is only found on the ends of DNA, but on chromosome two, you find that DNA uh, in the middle, right? And, in a head-to-head -head arrangement. And is it vestigial? Uh, vestigial, I mean, it, well, it is what it is. Ends. What? Like, is, is, is any part of that fusion uh, vestigial? Like, is there any function to it? Um, no, no. Like, like, uh, like, um, uh, why, um, have we found telomere sequences in the DNA uh, that actually prevent this fusion? Right. So telomeres, when they're functioning properly, would prevent fusions. That is true. However, when telomeres are not functioning properly, they tend to no longer exist anymore, which allows for fusions between uh, uh, non-homologous regions of uh, the chromosomes, which is most readily achieved between reasonably homologous regions, which would occur within subtelomeres where you would find degenerate repeat regions, which is exactly what we see in the middle of chromosome two. Okay, so... But before we get into um, anything more deep in regarding to that, based on you know how I explain the argument, right? Like if humans and chimps share a common ancestor, you know there should be a, a chromosome two fusion. There is, therefore, you know that's evidence, right? But wouldn't that be a logical fallacy known as uh, affirming the consequent? Like if the grass is wet, um, then it must have rained, right? But the grass is wet, therefore it rained. But the thing is, the grass could be wet for a number of reasons. So what I'm saying is that uh, the human chromosomal fusion argument, um, and, and obviously I want you to comment this, it, it really focuses on a fusion event that is specific to the human line and therefore provides a highly limited, um, I guess, form of evidence for human slash ape ancestry. Because if it occurred in that human line, but you're using that as sufficient and demonstrable evidence for ape human common ancestry. Isn't that just affirming the consequence? Go ahead. That's not what anybody is doing. The argument is that without a fusion, things look really weird. There is a fusion, therefore things don't look really weird. It doesn't mean that common ancestry is confirmed, it means that a possible roadblock to uh, a strong support of common ancestry has been removed. Okay, right? but how it, 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 is not, it does not exist as a piece of, um, of, of conclusive evidence, singular evidence that demonstrates the case. Instead, what it does is it removes a problem to this thing being the case. Okay, but how could the gene span the fusion site? Like seeing one part of it from one side to another seems a little bit unrealistic and a little bit of a stretch. Go ahead. I assume you're talking about DDX11L2? Sure. So you don't know? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Like how, yeah, great. how would you, um, because for one, the telomeres are functional wouldn't that indicate that the fusion is impossible or did, did that function come about through the chromosomal two fusion? Like how do you reconcile? Yeah. Um, when you say, when you say the telomeres, do you mean the fusion? 
are you saying you're saying the fusion is functional? The telomeres are functional, which would make the fusion unlikely based on that uh, function yeah. that it possesses. I think that most people would agree that it, that uh, telomere fusions are indeed unlikely, but okay. they do happen. Yeah, but it, it a lot of them. Do we see those fusions um, take place in human populations today? Uh, yeah, there's a guy in China, and I think a family in Sweden. Are those passed on to? Yep. Um, Nine but, generations. But what I'm saying is, wouldn't only a junk telomere be able to create this fusion? But probably no telomere at all. Like, I'm like, saying, I said, like I said, I'm saying the fact that only a junk telomere can create this fusion, doesn't that alone debunk the fusion? And if there even was a fusion, based on what you're providing for the evidence of the fusion, sounds like a logical fallacy called affirming the consequence. So it sounds like either way, fusion or no fusion, no, it's so, not so the great thing is, evidence. Is if, you knock off, if you knock off the telomere from one chromosome, right? Yeah. That end of the chromosome is going to want to fuse. Now, you can't stop fusion with one telomere, right? You need one on either end, right? They they work the the ends work like bumpers. If you only have it on one side, you can still get a fusion. Now, the most likely place to get a fusion is when there's some degree of homology between uh, the regions of the chromosomes. The thing is, every single uh, chromosome at the ends, inside of the telomere, you have subtelomeric regions. And these regions have areas of uh, very high levels of, um, of uh, movement within the genome, but they also have generally degenerate telomeric arrays. And those arrays are largely homologous to one another, which means you have a very good site for uh, non-homologous fusion because it's semi-homologous at that point. Now, what all of that means is that what you would expect to see at the fusion site is a mixture of degenerate telomeric arrays, which is what you see, along with the uh, g uh, genes, pseudogenes, and various other sequences commonly found by the subtelomeres, which is also what you see, including, okay, so including of course, a version of DDX11, which are only found by the telomeres. That's okay, so the only place you find it in the genome is by telomeres and also in the middle of chromosome two. Okay, so from my understanding, this um, degenerate part that you're talking about, it shows function. Secondly, it doesn't. let me, you just talk for, for a while there. That fusion thing was conceived, right? The chromosomal two predict, prediction sounds like decades ago biology to me because that fusion um, was pre was predicted and conceived during the junk DNA era. Without gene, uh, junk DNA, the fusion really just collapses on its own. And, and lastly, uh, based on what I said earlier about um, you know evolutionists and in regards to this, all they have done is really documented direct empirical evidence. Um, say if this chromosomal fu fusion did happen, either way, I, I don't think it's evidence, but um, it happened in the human line. So it doesn't tell you when it happened uh, and, and what was happening when it happened. So it sounds like presuppositions play a huge, huge role on the interpretations um, of the evidence. And it also sounds like all evidence becomes evidence for evolution. For example, if chimps and humans both had 48 chromosomes, oh wow, evidence for evolution. Okay, chimps have 48, humans have 46. Hmm, how do we reconcile that? Must have been some type of chromosomal fusion. Bam, evidence for evolution. Everything is evidence for bacteria to biologists, evolution. Go ahead. Well, if there hadn't been a fusion, that would have been a 
fairly strong case against common descent. Well, I'm saying there's evidence that possibly there wasn't a fusion. And I'm saying that even if there was a fusion, it doesn't tell you when it happened, what happened, and um, how it happened. But the thing is, based on our limited understanding of the DNA language anyways, and I've said that uh, many times, it's premature to make these um, conclusions. And let's just say, hypothetically, there was a chromosomal 2 two fusion. That means when it happened, it had to have been passed on um, to everybody for us to all have it, correct? I mean, is that not unlikely? And if it is likely, wouldn't that be based on a story? Like, aren't you going to have to tell me a fancy story on how that happened? Go ahead. Um, can I can I do a screen share? Uh, yeah, screen go ahead. Well. Screen, screen share and I'll present to you. Uh. Okay, here I'm. I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm gonna let you have the last words in regards to that. I'm gonna have to head out actually in about a minute. Um, have the last words. I don't mind that, and you guys can continue the talk, um, and then uh, we'll go from there, and we can do another Hang one. On a sec. One sec. Before you leave, hold on. Present to everyone. There you go. Okay. You want to see the evidence? This is yeah, the evidence. I'll, I'll give you the last. The last words. The last evidence. Go ahead. This is a sentinel map on the uh, interesting on the in the middle. You have human uh, <laughs> position is like interesting, even though he's got no idea what it is. <laughs> I'm explaining it. On in the middle, you have the human positions. On the left, you have uh, the equivalent positions in mouse. On the right, you have the equivalent positions in chimpanzee, color coded by the chromosome correspondence. This right here is the only jump. Is that human and chimpanzee? Is that no. degeneration show any function at all? These actually represent each of these lines represents a fairly large chunk of DNA. Hmm. Now you look at this in mouse. There is no reason to not if there's no common ancestry, to not expect to see something just as jumbled between humans and chimpanzees as you do is between humans and mice. So I, but you I'm don't. saying, I'm you saying see it, it could be perfect it could be evidence symphony. of degeneration. It could be um, evidence of. Um, it, it sounds like there is some evidence that it's not, and I'm saying that if it is, you still um, haven't really given us any direct evidence for ape. To human ancestry because for one it's going to have to be passed on to everybody and secondly if hypothetically this chromosomal fusion did happen it could have easily happened immediately post flood for everybody to get it or prior to the flood where the people coming off the ark could then uh, pass it on so either way it's affirming the con consequence because there could be multiple um, explanations guys have a fun well hold on before be, be, uh, yeah, be, before before you go i just want to 